Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. And, of course, write my time down on this. Rick Stockstill's Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders went 7-6 and six last year, and i got to tell you, I did not see it coming. And I will go ahead and, spoiler alert, let you know that I don't foresee that kind of record coming again this season. They're number 106 in returning production. That's 54%. Uh, their postgame win expectancy last year was 5.5 wins or so. They ended up going 7-6. and six. You know, they were right around where they were supposed to be, and they were shocking down the stretch. If you look at the offense, numbers were not good. They found a way to look a little bit better towards the end of the season, but overall season, number 110 in offensive PPA per drive, number 111 in rushing success rate, number 103 in passing success rate, and they were number 26 in explosive play rate. So there was no continuity. There was no... Uh, you couldn't count on anything, but they found a way to have a lot of big plays. I'll say that. Uh, because they, they were number 28 in total plays per game. Like, they ran a lot of plays. The offensive coordinator is Mitch Stewart. He was Samford's offensive coordinator, and that is Samford in Birmingham, D2 school, uh, or FC, FBS, FCS, whatever. Samford, the Samford Bulldogs, of course, where Jimbo and Terry Bowden and all that bunch came from. Uh, he loves to pass the football. Like, loves to pass the football. Does Nick Vatiato continue as the quarterback, or does Chase Cunningham come back and take the starting job after injury? Which one of these is a better passer? Because that is who Stewart is going to want as his quarterback. And I don't know right now. Nick was 4-2 and two as a starter at the end of last season, um, at least in the regular season. So the wide receivers, uh, Alley and Lane, along with Kansas State transfer running back Joe Irvin, they have playmaker ability. They, they will fit into this offense well. They did lose four offensive linemen, though. They're going to need development for Juco's, and that's not something that you typically see from Stockstill, but it was obvious that he needed help at this position up front because they didn't have a bunch of dudes. They they just didn't. So they were going to need help there. They brought in a bunch of guys. Uh, you don't have a bunch of experience there. On offense, 55% returning production. Defense is even worse, 53% returning production. That's number 104 in the country. And their offensive roster strength is number 121. Defensive roster strength, number 104. The defense is what led the way for them at the end of last season. Uh, We'll move over to that side of the ball. Number 35 in PP Upper Drive, they could not stop people from rushing the football. Number 100 in rushing success rate allowed. Number 40 in passing success rate allowed. And number 81 in explosive play rate allowed on defense. Scott Schaefer, of course, D.C., been there for a little while. Uh, the D-line is experienced. Defensive end Ferguson and quarterback Teldrick Ross, major havoc producers. That was a big reason why they had success last year. The secondary returns five guys with 200-plus snaps, so that's always good. As good as the defensive line appears, um, again, they allowed people to run on them quite a bit last year. Can they maintain this number 35 PPA per drive. The schedule sets up with a lot of teams that I believe like to run the football and will be able to kind of bully them around. I don't like the schedule for them this year at all. Uh, The keys to the season here, they brought in only five transfers. All five were P5 guys. Uh, What I'm curious about is Stock's still 64 years old. He has been here for a very long time. How long does he want to keep doing this? Uh, Defense was key to the late season rally. There's proven pieces, but not a ton of experience. Like, can this defense be as good as 2021? Because if the offense does not click, you are going to need them uh, to lean on again. And that's what they did at the end of last season. Uh, The quarterback battle is going to be interesting. There's good skill pieces, offensive line. It's probably going to be a bit of an adventure. But again, this is an offensive coordinator that likes to throw the football. He is probably going to get it out of the quarterback's hands quickly. So there are ways to scheme around a bad offensive line. Uh, what I want to know is what the offense coordinator is going to do with the offense. Like, is he going to stick to what he's known for, or is he going to try and find a way to throw in more run elements, et cetera? It depends on really the quarterback that he chooses here. I, I've got, I've got them at four and eight here. Uh, I've got wins over Florida International, Charlotte, uh, Tennessee State, and at Colorado State because obviously Jay Norvell at Colorado State going to be dealing with a lot of changeover. That's going to be interesting. So. A loss to James Madison early, a loss to Miami, uh, et cetera. So I, I think, I think that's the way that, um, that's the way that I would go on this. And we will, we'll move off of them four and eight for Middle Tennessee. 
Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.